personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Saving for down payment on a home. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. OneNote, you're not required to, but if you have access to and would like to follow along, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, practice problems tab down in the 7100 saving for down payment on home tab. Also take a look at the immersive reader tool. The practice problems will be in the text area too. Same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages and either listened to or read in them. We've got the information up top. We'll go through some of the calculations on down below when we go through the planning for a home purchase process. There's a couple scenarios or a couple angles that we might look at the process through. The first and most obvious process would be we're going to take a look at the homes and the area we would like to purchase. Look at the cost of the homes there. Determine how much is a required down payment in general. Determine how much financing would be necessary and go from there. Another method that we might use in conjunction as well would be to think how much money could I put away at this point in time to get to a down payment after a certain point in time and then think about with that down payment, how much house could I purchase given the fact that usually there's gonna be a required down payment to determine how much home I could purchase and then think about the financing from there. We can also take a look at this from the perspective of the bank and determine based on, in essence, our gross income, how much financing the bank would be likely to, to provide us with. So those are a couple different lenses that we can look through it from. Here, we're gonna start thinking about if I could put away so much money per year, then how much would I have after a certain time frame in terms of a down payment, and we will go from there. So we've got, we're gonna say the years uh, to purchase, we're gonna say in six years, we would like to purchase the home. We're gonna say that we could put the 7,500 into savings during that time on a yearly basis. So we got an annuity type of calculation. The rate of return is going to be the 6%. So we could determine what the future value would then be after the six years based on that information being the down payment at that point in time. We could then use that to try to figure out possibly how much home we could purchase and how much financing might be necessary. So we could do our future value calculation. Where would we stand after the six years? You could do this in Excel, Excel type of calculation. It would look something like this, negative future value. We would pick the rate. Notice I'm putting the rate here on an annual rate. So we're gonna use the 6% on an annual rate. And then I'm gonna say comma, the number of periods is gonna be six and we're doing this in years. So it's gonna be six years and then comma, the payment because it is a payment, it's an annuity payment. Uh, so we're using uh, the payment instead of the present value. And that is gonna be the 7,500. And that gets us to a future value at the end of the six years, how much we can put down the down payment if we're purchasing a home after that six years of the 52,315. We can see that calculation again if we do a little table on it, which I always think is a useful tool in part because it allows us to visualize the earnings and get a better visual understanding. And it's also useful to understand how these annuity calculations are working in terms of what the beginning point is that we're doing the calculation from. So in other words, if we're talking about period one, we're saying the amounts going in at the end of the period is the general assumption. So no income would be generated from it at that point. And then if I take a look at period two, now we've got the 7,500 investment and we earned income from the 7,500 in the prior period, which is 7,500 times the 0 0.06. That's the 450 plus the 7,500 that we're putting in this time, plus the prior, the prior amount, 7,500, 7,500. There's the 15,450. That 15,450 times 0 0.06 would give us the 927 of income if we were able to generate 6% income. Plus we put in another 7500 plus the prior balance was the 15450. That's gonna give us our 23877. Taking that times the 0 0.06 would give us income of about 1433. Plus we put in another 7500 and the prior balance was the 23877. There's the 32810. And then we'll do it a couple more times, times the 0 0.06. That gives us our 1969 about plus 
the 7500 plus the 32810. There's the 42. And finally, we're going to take that times the 0.06. There's the 2537 about plus the 7500 plus the 42278 gets us to the 52315 uh, that we would have at the end of the six years possibly able to put that on a down payment. You can also do that calculation just to practice our present value because these are our financial uh, tools. You can also think about it this way. What if I did six periods of one? And, you, and this will help you if, for example, you wanted to get more complicated and say your rate of return differs from year to year or something like that. I could look at the cash flow each year. Period one uh, is going to be this the uh, 7,500. And I'm going to have that then for for the five more periods so the formula would look something like this i'm going to have the future value of the rate which would be the six percent it's a yearly number of periods notice it's a kind of tricky calculation i'm going to take the six over here minus the one and put this first one as an absolute reference so that it will then uh, i'll be able to copy that down so it comes out to five and then comma, comma, because I'm not going to use the payment. This is present value of one. So in other words, if I took that 7,500 itself after and, and after the, the to the end of the period, the end of the six years, it would be at the 10,375, 70, I'm sorry, 10,037. If the 7,500 we put in in year two, similar formula, we're going to say the rate is going to be that 6%. The number of periods is now this six minus the two which is going to be four and then comma comma for the present value which is the 7500 gets us to the 9469 the third year 7500 will be at the 8933 the fifth year 7500 the 84727 uh, the fifth year 7500 will be at the 75 uh, 7950 sorry about that and note, of course, as you can see here, the first one that we put in, because we put it in earlier because of the time value of money, had more time to grow. So I think that's a useful way to be able to see it so that you can see that if you put the money in sooner, then it's going to grow sooner, right? And that's going to get us to the same if we sum this up, the 52,315, the 52,315. So then if we get that down payment, so now we can think about how much home we can purchase because I could say, well, if I then had the 52,315 and I and I expect that the down payment is the 20% that is necessary, we could be purchasing home valued at around the 261,574. So in other words, if I took this 52,315, that's how much I had cash divided by a 20% down payment, 0.2, because that's the average down payment that could change depending on the type of loan that you got. You've got, if you got some other kind of loan, formats you could have a different down payment but if i took the standard 20 that means i can basically buy the home for this for the 261 574 and then put it down the 20 percent down payment if i could get the financing for the difference which would depend in part on basically the bank of course and my credit score and my income and so on which i can which we'll take a look at in future presentations Let's put this in the normal calculation so we can see how it fits together. So if I had the home price of the 261,574, and then I had the down payment of the 20%, that means the down payment would be that 52. In other words, if I did this normally, I would say, okay, if I bought a home for the 261,574 and I had to put 20% down, hold on a second, 261,574 times 0.2, that would be the 52,315. And that means we would have to finance if the home cost 261,574 minus the 52,315 about the 209,260. Uh, it's rounded here because we took off the pennies. So notice you can you can do this in Excel. You don't need to do like these two calculations, although it's it's kind of nice to see them. But now if I set this up and I just adjust this data up top then I can, I can use this to say, well, what if I put in 8,000 and I can get my future value calculation and I can also then have this populate out so I can see how much home I could purchase and how much finance is going to be needed. And I can, I can put together a nice little uh, Excel sheet and try to project out. And then I can change things like, well, 
What if I change the number of years? If I change the number of years, it's going to have a problem with these tables, but this calculation will not have a problem with it. And then I, I can change the number amount that I'm going to save. And I can change, of course, the rate of return that I'm going to be getting. And I can adjust those factors and have a worksheet that I can that I can play with and see and see how much home I might be able to get after so many years and so on, which could be fun as well as possible, possibly useful for our planning process. Once we have that, if I knew how much we're going to finance, then of course we can go through our standard uh, loan calculation at that point. So if I said the rate is the 6%, I'm using that same rate, uh, but it might be different for the loan. So I'm using the same rate we had for the growth rate, but it might be different for the loan, but I'll just use that. And then 30 year and the payment is the 1255. Now at this point, you might use the tools online. You might go into your online calculation tool and say, I'm gonna type into Google loan calculator and get some kind of loan calculator. And that's fine, but I think the tool is somewhat limited. You could just put in then the 261574. So 261574. This is gonna be a 30 year. We put the 6% and calculate it. It's gonna be then the, the payment of the 156827. And so we've got the, that's different than what I got. Hold on a second. That's because the amount financed is only the 209. Uh, 260, 209, 260. That's the home price. So 209, 260, and then do it. So now I got the 125462. I think that's right. So we got 1255 rounded up. That looks good. So then we could do our amortization table, which I won't go into detail because we saw it in the past. You could do this here or in Excel and, and you can do it online by just clicking the amortization table, which is great, but you don't, you can't really run scenarios as easily. The amortization table breaking out the payments, the interest, the loan decrease, the loan balance, but it does it on a month by month basis. It's useful to break it out on a year by year basis, something like this, which we can do in Excel, which we cannot do as easily over here with the online tools. And that's why I highly recommend putting it into Excel because notice if you did this in Excel and you put all this together, then you can change this amortization table. You can change the, the breakout on a year by year basis, all based on this first number. Whereas if, you, if you're jumping from Excel to other tools, then you could do, you'd have to do this part kind of in Excel. And then if you're doing this, you'd have to do this in Excel. And then you'd have to basically do this in Excel. And then this part, once you get to that loan number, then you can jump over basically into the online tool and do your loan calculation. And then once you get the loan calculation, you'd have to jump back over into an Excel, possibly to break it out on a year by year basis. And then you can take this information and start to think about what's gonna be the impact for taxes and so on. And what will your budget look like uh, can you afford it, right, right? You could start to project your income statement from this information going forward. If you could do it all in Excel, then you can, you can, you can vary and run different scenarios much more easily. So this of course will break this information out uh, payment by payment. We've got the interest that you can also take this information from this table and start to think about what the tax implications might be based on this interest, which can get complex because you'd want to look at software to, to figure that out. We've got the loan decrease, and that represents all the payments that we had here through, through the first year. That's going to have an impact on the equity in the home, which is the difference between the loan balance and the home value. And uh, there's two things that we can think of that has an impact on that. One, us paying down the principal of the loan, which is going to, if I pay down the principal of the loan, we're going to have an increase in the gap between the value of the home and the loan value, even if, even if the value of the home doesn't go, doesn't change. And we're hoping the value of the home goes up. That would be the other thing that would, that would show that difference. And then we've got the loan balance, which is where our loan will stand at the end of the year, which again, will help us with an equ equity calculation to think about where we stand. And we could see how these things change on a year by year basis, as opposed to on a month by month basis. And notice of course the interest in the loan decrease will change will have differences on a year by year breaking out 30 30 years that's a lot easier to look at than this the amortization table it's a lot easier to look at than this the online amortization table and if we did it in excel 
we can use that to draw from to figure out our budgets from there. We could tie our budgets to this number and that and that'll help us to then just change a few numbers to then do our adjustments. I can just change these three variables and have everything then populate based on that, which is just, it's super fun and helpful. So we do this in Excel if you wanna check it out. We also do it in a pivot table format. So you could use your pivot tables uh, as well to break this out pretty easily, or you can use formulas. We do both of them in our practice problems. And so this would be a way that if you're thinking, well, I wanna buy a home in five, five years or something, you could look at the current home prices and so on. And then you might start to think, well, how much could I put away at this point in time? How much would it take to get to the down payment? You might have a down payment that you want to get to, for example, that's kind of like your goal. And then you could start to play with this to figure out how much you know you would need to save to get to there what the interest rate would be and then you could put the whole thing together so that it so that it spits out everything down to here to your to your amortization your breakout by period and then you can even take it from there and figure out if that would fit within your budget uh, and so on and possibly the savings that you would have on the interest uh, for taxes which you want to put some detail into that because that could be a little bit confusing so we do this in excel if you want to check that out there